attempt to fill you in on what's happened to my daughter Molly's life since we last spoke. She let her hair grow. I think I like it. I can't make up my mind. She's still single, rootless, ungainfully unemployed. And she smiles too much as she continues to bang her knees against the cruel furniture of life. So here she is, sprucing up her apartment, spring cleaning of the mind and body, redecorating on a shoestring, tossing some things, painting others, getting rid of silly choices she shouldn't have made in the first place. And speaking of men, well, she stopped seeing them because she tells me there's no percentage in it anymore, whatever that means. Her ex-husband hovers around the periphery like a coyote. Her girlfriends are off on their own tangents. As usual, Molly is all alone out there. Some sort of a job with a semblance of a future might help. But that would only provide her with a steady income, and as you can see, she's got everything under control. Awful. Well, you look awful. Well, how do you think you'd look? No, I'm, I mean, this happens to everybody. It never happened to you. No, but when it happens to you, it's symbolically happening to all of us. Oh. Come on, drink your coffee. It's a violation. I mean, that's the thing. People always talk about the violation. You mean the way one feels violated? Exactly. This damn city. Well, you know, it's any city, uh, anywhere for that matter. Oh, the slimy feeling that someone's out there preying on you, spying, waiting. You know, I mean, how do they know? How do they know what to look for, where things are hidden, you know, when you're not home? Thank God I wasn't home. Oh, you're right. No, thank God you weren't. But I, you know, they probably wouldn't have hurt you. No, I, no, I read where they usually don't hurt you. They just uh, sell the stuff and buy drugs. Yeah? Well, I read where they slit some old lady's throat. I read where they cut off this girl's finger just to get her rings. Yeah, but most of the time, they're not going to hurt you. Uh, if you're not home. Why are we listening to hillbilly music? I uh, See, actually, that's country-western music, Nina. I find it very evocative. Well, turn it off, okay? Okay. <sighs> Want to watch TV? Where? In the living room. It's like a train wreck in there. Pizza? No. Cookies? No. Fine. Do I seem irritable? No, you're a delightful companion. Can you imagine what it's like to walk into your apartment and find everything ransacked? Underwear hanging out of the drawers? Yes, I can, I, but I'm a bad example. My VCR, cassette deck with Dolby, which I bought about a week and a half ago. My mother's crystal, it's just not fair. Now, how, how do they carry that? How do they carry it? I mean, they must have to lug it across rooftops, down fire escapes. You know, and some of that stuff, I mean, it must weigh a ton. They advertise it as portable, you know, but it's never portable. I mean, portable for who? Your mother's crystal. How do they pack it so that it doesn't break? I mean, they must use that kind of corrugated styrofoam gizmo stuff. I don't believe you. What? I've been thoroughly cleaned out, and you're worried about how they lift it? No, Nina, no, I'm not worried. I'm just curious. Now, come on, think about it. I mean, it's got to be pretty tricky. I'm a much better friend to you than you are to me. What does that mean? I'm seeing a complete lack of sympathy on your part. Nina, I have offered you my home, my ear, pizza. I'm not one for spilt milk, you know? So let's just kind of suck it up and move on. So, now, where do you want to sleep? I don't think I'll ever sleep again. Okay, see, I have to go to sleep because I have a job interview tomorrow. Oh, fine, fine. Why don't I just go sit in the dark in the living room? Nina, you have to sleep. Why don't you take my bed? <laughs> Nina. Nina, don't cry. It's a nice bed. They took lady fingers. No. I've had that cat since I was in college. Oh, no. I, how could they do that? I don't know. They don't need lady fingers. I know. <laughs> oh. Who's that? Well, it's probably my mother. I told her I was going to be here. I told everybody. All right, listen, why don't you wash your face, and I'll go get it, okay? <sighs> 
Lady Fingers never hurt anybody. She just sat in the sun. Oh, uh... Nina Shapiro? Uh, who are you? Police. I'm Detective Hawthorne. Oh, uh, hi. Uh, I'm Nina's friend. Uh, she's in the bathroom. This isn't the place that was robbed, is it? Uh, no. Oh, no, I'm just painting. I'm throwing some things out. It's kind of a, a work in progress. Excuse the mess. I'll, I'll go call Nina. Nina? You think I might have a cup of that coffee there? Uh, it tastes awful. I drink awful coffee all day. I won't know the difference. <gasps> Nina? I'm in the bathroom. She's in the bathroom. And she's very distressed. She's been through hell tonight. Well, they're out there. Anything that isn't nailed down. It's a real epidemic. Keeps us on our toes. Hmm. Well, do you think you'll find Nina's things? Do you think you'll get them back? Oh, no, not a chance. They're probably already sold for drugs. I told Nina that. See, sometimes the merchandise is broken before it's fenced, and they just dump that in the river. I knew it. You knew what? Well, I, I knew that they broke things in transport. You see, I always suspected that. What's your name? Me? I, Dodd. Uh, Molly. Dodd. D-O-D-D-E. Um, do you need to write that down? No. I'll remember it. Molly Dodd. Uh, would you like some cream? No. Um, black is fine. Uh, so, uh, Nina. Nina? She'll be very anxious to talk to you. I mean, you know, usually she thinks the police are just kind of complacent jerks, but here you are, you know, Johnny on the case. You probably had to come out of your way. That, that's a good-looking kimono. Oh, uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, I, I like the uh, colors. Yeah, it brings out the tint in your hair. Do you think my hair looks tinted? Oh, no, 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 I meant, you know, the, the natural highlights. Oh, really? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I heard that on a commercial, you know, I mean, talking about the highlights uh -huh. in, the, in the... Oh, well, thanks. Uh, yes. Luster. <laughs> Some people like it. Um, well, officer. Uh, Nate, call me Nate. Nate Hawthorne? No. What, Nathaniel Hawthorne? Not my fault, all right? Uh -huh. Oh. Oh, I didn't realize that. I, I didn't know anyone was here. I was throwing up. Nina, this is Detective Nathaniel Hawthorne. Well, hello. I'm policewoman Elizabeth Barrett Browning. No, uh, Nina, that's really his name. Oh, how about that? He's here to investigate your robbery. Oh. They said at the station that uh, you were hysterical on the phone and they couldn't understand a word you were saying. No, I was perfectly lucid. Well, what they got was um, my mother's, it came from Russia, and I, they ripped off the lobby doors, share o bubbly, the good Jew. Then they heard some gulping and choking, and then, the, and then my friend, Molly Dodd. Then the line went dead. You know, I think it's really remarkable, you know, that you were able to find Nina just by hearing my name <laughs> mentioned. I mean, that is really, that's excellent detective work right there. Thanks. Um, so, what did you mean when you said they ripped off the lobby doors? I said levelors. Share of bubbly? No, stereo with Dolby. <clears throat> the good Jew, and who, who might that be? Good jewelry. I must have been swallowing my words. Is that it? Uh, don't forget Lady Fingers. The cake? Cat. My cat. They stole my cat. Cat burglars. No, well, she's missing. Well, she'll turn up. Yes, but will my peace of mind turn up? My faith in mankind? That's going to take some time. But you hang in there, Nina. In the meantime, if you think of anything that uh, you think I need to know, just give me a call. Oh, uh, could I have one of those? You know, just in case I think of uh, something. <laughs> sure. Thanks for the coffee. Mm. Slade, you all get some sleep now. Blatant. What? It was my robbery. I was victimized. I was barfing in the bathroom, and you were out here moving in on my cop. 
Nathaniel Hawthorne. It has a very nice ring, doesn't it? It's kind of New Englandy. Doesn't Mimi ever say, Mom, stop spending so much money on the kids? Mimi never says anything like that. No, never, never. Mom, you don't have to bring $500 worth of toys every time you come to visit. Oh, I don't visit all that much. What, what isn't babysitting enough? I would babysit for you, except for one thing. Ah, oh, Mama, I never know exactly how you're going to slip it in, but somehow, you know, you always find a way. You do. Those kids are so cute. You know what Tiffany said to me the last no, time I was what? there? What? She said, Grandma, I want you to stay with us forever because you're as pretty as the fairy princess of the universe. Well, that sounds spontaneous. It was precious. Mom, it... Where's Fairy Princess of the Universe? Now you tell me, what does that mean? You see, it means nothing. If you must know, that child reminds me of you. She has the same mannerisms. She has those fat little legs and a lovely smile. She's your niece after all. Mother, mother, you see, I don't have fat little legs. When is the last time you actually sat down and talked to your sister? Well, I met Mamie, as a matter of fact, a couple of days ago at Rumpelmeyer's. She seemed a little distracted, so I just drank my yogurt and left. She told me you seemed distracted. In our own peculiar way, Mamie and I understand each other. And in our own peculiar way, we have a kind of okay relationship. I will feel bad when she dies, as I know she will for me. <sighs> Bite your tongue. Where are we? Uh, actually, we're about a block away from where I have a job interview, which I am already five minutes late for. Good start. Bound to make a wonderful impression. I'll see you soon. Yeah. Will you please zip up your purse? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Mom. Give the hoodlums an open invitation. Why don't we? You know, Nina was robbed. I know. I talked to her mother. You're all just targets in this jungle. Women alone. Taxi! Bye, dear. Good luck, Molly. Hope the interview goes well. Call me if you get the job. Make sure they offer health benefits. I will. The Fish family talks about a brand new air freshener. We're just thrilled to the gills with new Renewsit Fresh Air. The very latest in air fresheners. We think it's the most beautiful shape in the world. It reminds us of the old neighborhood. <laughs> Introducing new Renews It Fresh L. It's a beautiful shell on the outside, and inside it's a long-lasting air freshener that freshens all day, all week, all month. Since Renews It Fresh L. Oh, we're the freshest fish in town. <laughs> new Renews It Fresh L. Good looking, hard working. If your carpet isn't DuPont Stain Master, you may have less protection from stains. Less protection from wear. In short, you may have a lot less carpet than you bargained for. Instead of settling for less, get DuPont Certified Stain Master. The advantages will grow on you. It's not a Stain Master carpet if it doesn't say DuPont. Poor Cinderella can't go to the ball. She's dressed in a droopy diaper that feels all wet. Abracadabra, Cinderella. Kleenex Huggies Super Trim Diapers will sweep you off your feet. Only Huggies has the blue inner layer that helps funnel wetness into the padding and holds it away for unbeatable dryness, plus a softly padded waistband. Ah, Cinderella's wearing Huggies now, and she's having a ball. Huggies, happily ever after. May we get started? You know, you need a hobby besides your hair. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha! Doesn't anything ever change? Tomorrow I'll make a bunt cake. I'm scared. Are we having fun yet? How dare you make a move on my husband? Like your style. Does this mean I'm a bunny? That'll dampen your fruit loops every time. Thank you for a wonderful evening. Maybe I don't want to go. Dad, how many times do you think you've shaved in the past 50 years? This is nuts. September movies. The best movies on Lifetime. Oh, I think so. I didn't fall, did I? Usually, I fall and split my head open. Ah, uh, I hope these books didn't get wrecked. No, no, books should be dropped from time to time. It's, uh, they need to be shaken up. It's, uh, it's good for them. <laughs> um, can I, uh, help you find something? Um, uh, a book, maybe. Uh, I'm looking for Mr. Goodman. 
Uh, sounds like looking for Mr. Goodborough. What? R remember that book? Uh, which book? Looking for Mr. Goodborough. Oh, yeah. Oh, so looking for Mr. Goodman sounded a lot like it. I get it. Uh, well, which Mr. Goodman are you looking for? Uh, the one who owns the store. Hmm. Is that you? Well, I'm Moss Goodman. Uh, but uh, my father's probably the Mr. Goodman you should talk to. Uh, my uncle's dead, who was his partner. Uh, my father's in Montreal now, so I'll talk to you uh, if you want. Uh, you mean do the interview? What interview? I was supposed to have a job interview with Mr. Goodman. I have absolutely no concept of anything you're talking about. No? Okay. Uh, what it boils down to is that I'm looking for something in the literary field, and, uh, well, they decided not to make me head of Harcourt Brace, so I thought maybe selling books would be interesting. Mm. I love books. Oh, I love books, too. <laughs> Good books. I, I hate bad books. Did you like the way I kind of slipped Harcourt Brace in the conversation, you know, to make me seem more knowledgeable? Uh, what's Harcourt Brace? I mean, isn't it a very famous book publishing company? I, I don't know. I uh, don't read the covers. Uh, I always feel it's a bad way to judge a book. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's pretty funny. What? You can't judge a book by its cover. Well, you can't. I mean, you shouldn't. Uh, take this book. Uh, this is Beowulf. Doesn't even have a cover. Right. See, no, I get it. I, I do understand. Um, so now, you know, if there were to be a job here, and if I were to get it, what do you think the salary might be? And what is it you'll be doing? Gosh, you see that? I don't know. Uh, I would be working, probably, you know, learning about the book business. Does anybody work here? Mm -hmm, I do. Uh, uh, she might. <laughs> uh, Barry Comstock. Oh, what about him? Do you have anything by him? Yeah, we have uh, Legato Largo, Sweet Desdemona, both anthologies of the Oklahoma Poem Cycle, uh, but we're out of New Mon Hay. Uh, go back one aisle. There's some Encyclopedia Britannica's, all the Comstock's under there. Boy, that's amazing. Well, it is, isn't it? <laughs> huh. God, you know, I, I never even heard of Barry Comstock. Oh, well, he was born in 1921, Topeka, Kansas. Started writing in prison in 1959. Uh, some bootleg volumes of his stuff started servicing around the time of the uh, Kennedy assassination. But became sort of a minor cult figure. He was uh, rearrested five years ago for manslaughter and died in jail. Barry Comstock. Yep. I, would I be expected to know all that kind of stuff? I mean, if I were to work here. I should think you'd want to know. I would. No, I, it, it's fascinating. Okay. <sighs> well, oh. um, I have to go to the bathroom now. Oh, uh, uh, should I wait for you, or...? <sighs> well, we only have the one bathroom. Oh, uh, uh, is the interview over? Yeah. And how did it go? I liked it, I, I think. So, when do I start? Tomorrow. Okay, so what's the deal? Uh, beg your pardon? Uh, is there a reason for this? Just a sample of what it'll be like when they put me out to pasture. Uh, what does that mean? Read your tenant newsletter. Upgrading the lobby and elevator. Oh, Davy, come on. I mean, you're a fixture here. You know, you're like the subway. Nobody's gonna cut that kind of landmark loose. You're such a sap, Miss Dodd. God love you. They'll strip me of my buttons quicker than you can say Rene Auberginois. And me give my heart's blood and the fruit of my youthful loom. Better get that. Screw them. Yeah. Go! Got an emergency here. Who is it? Back of the matter if you don't get moving. Does that man live in 12F? Uh, nobody lives in 12F. Uh, Dave, that's where he came from. Hey, can we tell later? Somebody's dying here. Say yes, excuse yes. me, Miss Dodd. Cold red.
Molly, this is your mother. Call her before the end of the year. I, Nina, I still feel distraught, and I know you feel I'm in a position, so I'll just check into some sleazy hotel for the next few months until the terror passes. Oh, I, I need that cop's number. I lost his card. I did. I'm sure you didn't. So call me at work. Oh, oh, I found Lady Fingers. She was in my sock drawer. I'm Terry from the Rodeo Shop in Tulsa, and Freddie Dodd has charged a pair of snakeskin boots for $295, and we're sending you the bill. He is such a wonderful musician. I watch him play every night. I sure do miss him since that night that we Pretty song. We're all wet, Fred. No. It's a pretty song. You're not really here, are you? No. This is about five years ago. Raining then, just like it is now. Keeps raining all the time. You were wearing the same exact Chinese thing. I don't think you had much on underneath. What are you doing here, now, today? At precisely the moment that I don't need you. It's only a daydream. I wouldn't be here if you didn't conjure me up. Yeah, well, I don't much like daydreams. You know, they distort reality. They kind of gloss over the rough edges. It's all in the eyes of the dreamer. I don't think about you anymore. N never. So just go away. Please. Then we went over to the bed part of the room. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that was the last time. It didn't have to be. Yeah, but one of the times had to be the last time. How about that music? Pretty melancholy, isn't it? Yeah, well, you notice that, huh? It's persistent. Yep. Never seems to end. 